Konami's Tokimeki Memorial underneath the legendary tree, Densetsu no Kinoshitare, for the Super Famicom, circa 1996. Yes, this is a Japanese import, and what do you know, amongst most of the shit I've reviewed in the past, why not a dating sim, right? Therefore, expect some heavy translations on my part. All ramblings aside, let's get into this shit. Before I proceed any further, for those unaware, this is a downscaled port of its original NEC PC Engine Super CD ROM Squared counterpart, alongside the more advanced Saturn, Windows, and PS1 variations, with the latter being out the same year. Also, I'm dedicating this, as usual, to Brooklyn Interactive Group, Somerville Media Center, Link Community TV, Cambridge Community TV, Bitbar and the Crypt in Salem, Blast Processing Video Games, Retro Lone Wolf, One Coin Only, Headlocks Gaming, Black Retro Gamer, Ian Bergeson, Matt Lister and the Stones from Merrimack, Dover, and Ridge, New Hampshire, respectively, The Mount Vernon Kid, Chavez Slovakia, Blasphemous HD, Film and Stuff, James Rawl from Cinemassacre, Girls Play from Oregon, Kenzie Bach, Lauren Pespisa, Rod Weber, Embry Galen, Darman Studios, Jay Shetty, Vid Chronicles, ETU Animated Stories, Expect the Unexpected, and finally, Tim Rogers from Action Button, and if she's watching this, in genuine atonement for an earlier grave offense, I'm in no position to get into at this point, Boston voiceover artist and opera singer Erica Brookheiser. With these well situated, why waste any more time? Taking place at Kirameki Private High, which of course is fictional, a new hopeful student by the name of Naoto Takami, whom you can also rename from the get-go just like Link and Ash from Zelda and Pokemon respectively, harbors a sudden crush on a red-haired girl, Shiori Fujisaki, who's also applied there. It's obvious that the two have been friends since childhood, but their relationship's been dwindling over time up until this juncture, hence why the former had to study his ass off and pass the mandatory entrance exams in order to get enrolled in B with her. Following the entrance ceremony, we're then taken to the classroom and hallway areas where the following characters are introduced, amongst many you'll meet throughout. Yoshio Saotome, who's an easygoing chap who can relay info on any girl within the school community and even provide their phone number so you can contact them for dates, or as the cool kids say, hit them up, and especially Shiori herself. and Rei Ijuin, the rich grandson of the school's chairman of the board of directors, who turns out to be a complete fucking asshole, despite being popular with all the girls, and reappears when he makes a bitchy fit about his suit. Lastly, we see Shiori again as she introduces another legendary tradition that's been passed down at the school for many generations. Outside lies a tree, under which if a girl confesses her love to a boy at the end of their three-year school tenure, they'll joyfully remain together forever. But until that special day, the latter has to prove to the former, in this particular case, Naoto, towards either Shiori or any other girl he comes across or gets to know, that he has the proper traits and skills. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where the first of the three school years really takes off, with two more yet to follow, of course.
Regarding the gameplay, it's hinted a while ago, it's a dating simulator akin to the Dokusei franchise by the long since defunct Elf, where there's an accented E as in Ole, except pronounced differently, Sega's Sakura Wars, Miho Nakayama's Tokimeki High School by Nintendo, Natsume's Harvest Moon franchise, and even certain parts of Atlas's Persona franchise, where you, as the previously recounted hopeful Kurameki Private High freshman turned sophomore, go through every waking day and night, and make the best first impressions on not only yourself and your schoolmates, but also the numerous, diverse range of girls you'll encounter, not just Fujisaki herself of course, whom despite introducing her a bit earlier, I'll continue to do so much later, while surviving the tenure of his inevitable three-year high school career. <laughs> Upon starting, not only do you name your character whomever, as mentioned previously, in either Hiragana, Katsukana, or Kanji, cause Japan, or if one might desire, normal English characters, and set his birth date and blood type, ditto for Shiori's regarding the latter two attributes, you're also allowed to either watch or skip the aforementioned prologue slash introductory sequence. Following the latter, you're then taken to your main dorm room hub, containing all your key stats at the top, depending on which activity or action you decide to partake in, stamina, humanities, science, art, athletics, general knowledge, or trivia if you will, appearance, perseverance, and stress. And even the 12 main activities and actions, two-thirds of which determine how much you'll either randomly raise or lower these stats. Humanities basically catch up on reading, science perform any chemical or biological experiments, arts sketch the tree frequently, exercise pretty much make your character run his ass off, join a school club, in other words pick any club, participate in it, and determine whether or not it's right for him, socialize, shoot the shit with Yoshio and others, fashion, up the ante on your looks, rest, get some much deserved shut eye to replenish your stamina and decrease your stress, phone, call either Yoshio, Ijuin, Shiori, or any other girl you meet, date, hence the heart icon, only select this if you've set up a date with a girl ahead of time, and whatever you do, when that given date dawns on you and your desired significant other, don't blow it off or you're fucked! Examine, reading the papers, and finding out about available date spots, only available during the daytime, System settings, changing the options as you would at the beginning, in terms of the cursor speed and or the text speed, switching controls between your controller or a mouse, and even save or load your progress, the penultimate of which is a must, only during the evening, likewise in the PS1 and Saturn counterparts, as long as your memory card or RAM cartridge is jacked in beforehand, respectively. Control-wise, the menu cursor can be guided with either your original controller's D-pad or the SNES mouse, and depending on which accessory you're utilizing, you can confirm or cancel your choices via Y and B individually, or the left and right buttons on the mouse. Throughout each day, you'll pretty much be improving your avatar character in terms of those first eight activities, thereby molding him into either an intelligent and sensible student via the aforementioned humanities, science, arts, school clubs, and socializing habits, a dashing irresistible beefcake via the fashion command, or a strong-willed jockass athlete via the exercise command, while not only catching a substantial wink of shut-eye, hence the previously addressed rest command, but also being frequently interrupted by important ass exams, which your student will either pass or fail depending on how much you force him to study his ass off, like in real life obviously, and or random as fuck school events and festivals, the latter of which I'll also dive into ASAP. Eventually, depending on your often developing exercise, study, and club participation habits, you'll end up not only bumping into Shiori herself, whose birthday and blood type are predetermined by you from the get-go, as I mentioned not too long ago. Not to mention the fact that she's into music, especially classical, and craves romance and passion like Gourmet Ramen and Kimchi Jjigae, but also the following girls, whom you'll have to go above and beyond to impress, again, just like in real fucking life, with the latter two being tougher to track down and woo, I might add. Ayako Katagiri, discovered while you're sketching the tree, or participating in either the art or band clubs in order to boost your art stat points between 50 to 65, or higher, who's into visual arts and karaoke with a habit of peppering her statements with random English terms at times. Mio Kisaragi, discovered while catching up on reading or participating in either the literature or drama clubs in order to boost your humanity stat points between 55 to 75 or higher, who's a gentle, polite bookworm with absolutely no interest in sports whatsoever. Storm of my goddamn life, right? Yu 
Yuko Asahina discovered at random intervals, mainly when you're in the hallways or upon boosting your general knowledge and trivia stat points to at least 91 or above. The trendy wildcard type who's concerned with what's new and hip in terms of fashion and entertainment, especially cinema. Absolutely no fucks given whatsoever about academics or athletics. Nozomi Kiyokawa discovered while catching up on exercising or participating in the swimming club, talk about total Olympic material. Not only does she jog every day up to a reasonable distance of 50 kilometers, while also scoring 180 points in her academics, there's a soft, sensitive side to herself, notwithstanding her obvious, take no shit, no fucking around tomboyish disposition. Yuina Himo discovered while catching up on science or participating in the science club, a highly intellectual megalomaniac whose IQ rivals those of even the late Stephen Hawking, Chris Knight and Mitch Taylor from Real Genius, Dr. Larry Angelo from The Lawnmower Man, and even Dexter and Jimmy Neutron combined. Not to mention possesses a deep admiration for electronics, inventions, and experiments. Again, like yours truly. Yukari Koshiki discovered while, again, catching up on exercising or participating in the tennis club, the richest girl you'll come to know, very soft-spoken and free-spirited despite being self-centered at times, and knits for a hobby, and to top it all off, she longs for an adventurous, pure-of-heart better half, and then some. Saki Nijino discovered while once more catching up on exercising or participating in either the soccer or baseball clubs. She's pretty much the true sports club idol who's into potential athletic winners and even guys who possess a strong heart and mind and is loyal towards her alone and is a kick-ass cook. Yumi Saotome discovered while participating in the basketball club and or when your appearance points are at a solid 120, Yoshio's spunky ass sister, the immature fun-loving girl who's into all types of shit that many others aren't, case in point, gaming, pro wrestling, and anime, and craves an itching desire to be treated maturely like the rest of her peers. Mira Kagami discovered in the hallways at random when your appearance points are at a whopping 300, while the rest are at 110 or higher. A well-endowed beauty of a nice queen, mature in both her personality and attire, and has her own fan club despite the latter being absent. Not to mention the fact that she has a true dark past that haunts her even to the game's current events, in spite of her popularity with all the guys, and how stoked she is with her current lifestyle. And lastly, we come to Megumi Mikihara, introduced by Shiori at random during the Christmas party or during Valentine's Day, an accomplice of Shiori's. She isn't very shy despite being soft-spoken, in depth juxtaposition with her tendency to stutter, possesses something of an inferiority complex, and is into animals. In order to be with her, your stats have to be super high, just like with Shiori, as they share the exact same set of needs. Did I forget to mention you even have to win every goddamn school sporting fair contest throughout the year, which I'll get to momentarily, to consider maintaining a steady relationship with her? And Miharu Tatebayashi, also discovered in the hallways and or contacts you at random, the ultra-cute stalking ultimate consolation prize of a girl, who's a scotch more shy compared to all the rest. Not to mention barges in when you happen to find yourself in the absolute deepest shit. Hence why Minnie Corner has the trouble girl. Bottom line, I wouldn't even bother with this bitch. And she'll turn up briefly during your dates with the other girls and then move on. Rudimentary biographical breakdowns aside, while each activity you partake in has their obvious advantages, there's disadvantages that come with them. Like if Takami studies any subject too often, he'll get extremely stressed the fuck out while his muscles drastically weaken. If he exercises too often, his grades will steadily decline worse than a failing company while becoming dramatically exhausted. If he concentrates on his appearance too often, he'll end up turning into a pathetic ass dipshit despite his already slick looks. And if he rests too much, he'll miss out on every important task and or event. Therefore, I'd strategically balance each habit if I were you, and ditto for the dates, on which I'll get around to in no time. Regarding the phone command, always, always call Yoshio first regarding any dating info before moving on to anything else. Following a brief ice-breaking conversation with him, with his sister Yumi incessantly and briefly cutting in no less. 
You're prompted to inquire him about the girl's opinions and thoughts of you, depending on their overall moods or the current happening date spots in the area, with the latter turning out to be useless as all get out, since the newspapers have you covered, via the examine command. Additionally, you'll spill the beans about any girl you've encountered just recently, depending on who's been mentally hardwired before calling. In terms of measurements, activities, interests, the school clubs that she's part of, and her individual shape-coded number at the top, Upon selecting the former, you're introduced to a quote-unquote mood chart, indicating how every girl you've come across feels about or thinks of you, running the gamut from three hues of blue, stoked, enraptured, or head over heels, to a grayish purple hue, meaning neutral, all the way through three hues of magenta and red, in other words, slightly upset to extremely pissed off, in which case a bomb will appear, giving off the warning that she'll in all likelihood gossip, and, should you run into her again, she won't say fuck all while in either mood, or incessantly bitch or talk down non-stop on your conniving ass. That is, if you turn her down in the event of any date set up by you or her, and or turn down offers to walk any girl home, ignore said dates, stand her up for someone else, treat her like shit, or just flat out drive her ass up the goddamn wall. All of which I strongly advise steering the fuck clear of by maintaining a decent, non-romantic relationship with your desired young maiden of choice. Take note, this can and will happen between the second and sixth turns following the second warning. So I'd make every motherfucking effort count in setting up and going on dates in advance, calling them in advance while taking into account what their true interests are. In other words, don't just invite a girl to where they're most uncomfortable or unfamiliar with, accepting their walking home together invitations in a round robin pattern whenever appropriate, or reload a safe game prior to said quote unquote bombings. Should you end up with three bombing threats from different girls, a chain reaction will occur between not just them, but everyone else, giving rise to the outcome in which the entire Kirameki Private High community will shun your ass for life, resulting in an instant mother goddamn fucking brick shit and game over! During each of the three years you'll spend at Kirameki Private High, there's a plethora of special events that take place outside your normal, everyday schedule. On New Year's Day, you'll go to get your fortune told depending on the type of life report you're aiming for, whether it's your studies, health, or love life with any girl. On Valentine's Day, girls will deliver chocolates to you, proud of which Ray apps his fucking ass off about its classy ways. In March, it's your turn to do vice versa, that is, give any girl a special gift, depending on her overall feelings. Throughout late March to mid-April, you'll get to take your desired significant other through Kirameki Park, underneath the cherry blossom or sakura trees. During the first week of May, hence it's Golden Week, you'll receive a five-day vacation, not only continuing to advance your stats while maintaining your stress, but also rectifying every bombing threat. During mid-July or mid-August, there will be random double date opportunities alongside Yoshio, with Shiori and a random girl depending on who's been warming up to you the most, and vice versa, some examples including Ayako, Nozomi, or others, at the amusement park. Trying out three, if in some cases four, different rides and attractions, starting with the Ferris wheel, the classic roller coaster, or the jet coaster, or in some cases the magic bell, and finally the haunted house, aka the ghost house. Of course, considering the console's limitations, why the sequences of each ride or attraction weren't included is anyone's guess. But then again, the PS1 and Saturn counterparts made every effort to atone for those aforementioned omissions. school sporting events, which in full unapologetic ass honesty, I never ever look forward to at all and is the end all, be all bane of my existence, involving one of four activities to participate in, the 100 meter dash, akin to track and field, another fucking Konami title I might add, where you rapidly tap A and B, or in some cases left and right, to make your character couple haul ass to the finish line, the three-legged race, same situation, except you tap certain buttons in a more sporadic rhythm and pattern, and your timing has to be damn perfect on both. And finally, two larger scale team games, which are at the very least far less stressful than the other two, including throwing a multitude of balls into a single basket, and ending up with more than the other team before the opposite results take effect. Passing a giant ball all the way to the goal at the far right, which involve the same speed variating button masher techniques. On field trips to either China or Australia in mid-September, which occur once per game by the way, again you'll visit with either Yoshio or a girl of your preference to whom you've been warming up lately, see the sights, 
Either Tiananmen Square and the Great Wall, that is if you're in China, or the Sydney Opera House and Ayers Rock, that is if you're in Australia, and even be challenged to a one-on-one -on -one RPG-style duel against a Final Fantasy, Dragon Warrior, etc. against either a panda or a crocodile. And even if your HP meter reaches 3 or below, your significant other will still commend you for your overall perseverance and stoicism. In October, there is the club fair event, minus any sports this time, thank god, during which you'll visit the different school clubs alone or with any girl, and get their latest scoops and updates if you're not a member of any of the following clubs, one of which you should have picked by this point, or not, literature, drama, science, art, or band, or participate in their respective activities if you are, share poems and speeches, portray the leading main character's role in a given play, coordinate the demonstration of a laser show, illuminating either the faces of either Shiori or Yuina, or activate its one and only robot, paint a full still-life composition while providing dialogue, and or stage a live idol song performance as one of the guitarists for the school's band, Kaonbu. Visit Ray's annual Christmas party around Christmas Eve, to which you're permitted in by his esteemed yet stern bodyguard, namely Yukino Joso Toy, depending on how high both your athletics and or appearance stat points are, and whether or not you call DJ in. And be sure you socialize often in advance. Shoot the shit with Ray, score a gift for any girl depending on her overall feelings, including but not limited to a pre-autographed photo of that spoiled, rich bastard, and save yourself from one of the most embarrassing situations anyone can drag you into, which of course will take place if you end up being denied entry. Throughout the 2nd and 3rd of March, 7th and 8th of July, and the 8th and 9th of December, exams are organized and held for language, math, science, social studies, and arts, with two-thirds of the subjects having the most clout as opposed to all the rest, in which case you'll end up with a shitty overall grade scoring if you fail miserably, hence those frequent interruptions I hinted at a while ago, as well as the college entrance exams, during which you're given a choice whether or not to apply for them, the latter of which is a mandatory alternative should your character turn out to be a complete fucking dipshit, and which type of university he wants to apply for, depending Depending on the knowledge level he resonates with concerning his overall academic studies throughout the three-year tenure, hence the following ranks. Third rank if your score winds up below 200, second rank if your score winds up below 400, and first rank if it winds up above 400. And regarding birthdays of not only your main student character, during which every girl will offer you gifts depending on whom you've been seeing and warming up too often and vice versa, or just plain dick all. But on those of said girls, you're free to decide whether or not to give them gifts, with the former resulting in the choice of three possible parcels depending on its quality and the personality of the recipients in question. Bottom line, don't give her any shitty ass low quality gifts or she'll get pissed! During random intervals of each school year, you'll be coerced into one of three mini-games during your shopping center dates, where you find the marble in one of three magic cups, one involving a roulette machine, and the other involving a biorhythm match compatibility between you and your desired bitter half, akin to those old sex tester machines at the amusement parks. Not that I've ever tried any of them, god forbid. Nothing personal. An RPG-style duel against three random enemies and a boss, with some involving Yakuza, I might add. And finally, a test of luck, curiosity, and courage involving, get this, peeking through one of three pre-concealed bathroom windows during breaks from the weekend academic club sessions, revealing one of the following depending on your level of luck, half-nude girls bathing, random muscle-bound jack motherfuckers, or just a gaudy empty-ass tub.
and on the last day of the third and final year, March 1st that is, you'll pretty much wander around the campus until you reach your main classroom, about to receive a letter from the girl that you've been maintaining a steady relationship with so far, minus any serious complications or grudges whatsoever, telling you to meet her near the very same legendary tree, or upon reuniting with Yoshio in case you haven't made your moves with anyone all game, remain a broken ass, unsuccessful, disgraced fucking loner just like yours truly. I know. Chickshaw! Anyways, all pointless self-comparisons aside, for a dating simulator, not to mention a downscaled 16-bit port based on its original CD counterparts, the rudimentary control setup and gameplay engine are anything but mind-boggling, despite how much of an endlessly searing pain in the scrotum the track and field style races can become, setting aside everything else. And since the game's in Japanese, assuming you have a clear enough grasp of the dialogue, again, like yours truly, hence why I've taken the liberty of pre-posting translations as mentioned before throughout this review, as I've done in the past with YY World 1 and 2, Samurai Pizza Cats, Parodius, Akira, Mystical Ninja, aka Ganbare Goemon 2, Astro Boy, and the like. It's obvious how straightforward every decision-based and plot-driven situation can be, if at times perplexing as fuck, as long as you're capable enough of following them to a T, that is. And don't even get me started, for fuck's sake, about the importance of showing proper etiquette towards your desired virtual crush, especially proving to her that you're the real deal when it comes to every relevant life aspect. Then again, to quote Dennis Miller, that's just my opinion, I could be wrong. In regards to Tokimeki Memorial's challenge, for those trying to write off this enthralling yet complex dating simulator as a leisurely milk run, get your noggins the fucking Christ out of the pussy clouds already, cause it'll tear off your flesh, gut out your eyeballs, and piss non-stop right into your ocular cavities like an open goddamn toilet! Anyways, time management is a predominant as fuck strategic factor when it comes to juggling the eight key daily activities and habits, namely the aforementioned humanities, science, arts, school clubs, socializing, fashion, rest, and phone commands, about whose pros and cons I suggest referring back to for the sake of avoiding a one-way ticket down ditto drive. Moreover, while upping the ante on your intellectual and physical stats, you have to be extremely, extremely decisive in your dating choices regarding which girl is up for any possible get-together, which places she prefers or is the absolute bait of her existence, which gifts to give them on their respective B-Days, pretty much the whole fucking nine. And speaking of the date spots, not every single destination will be available, except at later and or random timeframes of the three-year school tenure, or depending on which console version you're playing. But here's where you can arrange any date with your significant other when contacting her, and make damn sure it's during any weekend or on any day marked pink. In addition, you can also set up advanced dates between different school weekends with different girls to not only level out the proverbial playing field, but mostly to evade those infamous bombing threats by ensuring that every prearranged date goes off without a hitch and that no one's ignored too long. Not only that, while on a date with your desired significant other, you're given a choice of two or three possible replies that will determine her overall mood towards your character, so I'd pick the right ones carefully. Or, if you've saved your game ahead of time, take this opportunity to rethink your dating arrangements and overall mindset, as not to deliberately shit on any of your potential partners. Did I once again forget to mention that there will be situations where your significant other will end up in one of two spots on the designated day of your prearranged date, whether set up by you or her? 
My best bet's to pick whichever location she'll show up at eventually. Otherwise, yet again, you two may end up throwing each other under the bus big fucking time, thereby ending up, if in some slightly rare cases, with an extremely devastating answering machine message, and resulting in those very same earlier hinted penalties. Also, avoid any cheetathons like oncoming or stationary highway traffic. In other words, don't end up like that dumbass, alcoholic, sex-crazed writer Zach Hudden from the late Blake Edwards' Skin Deep. Rest in peace, John Raider. <laughs> Oh, I almost forgot. You may end up being asked for dates by different girls at random, so I'd be wise as to submit to those requests by any goddamn means necessary. And once again, don't ignore them, or you're a piss puke jizz and shits creeks with nothing more than your bare ass arms. There will also be cases where you'll end up being forced to settle for those that have caused you far less grief than all the others, in terms of those dreaded as fuck bombing threats. In which case, balancing out both your dating habits and overall daily and monthly schedules is imperative as long as you're on friendly terms with everyone, not just the desired girl to whom you're making every effort to confess your innermost feelings prior to graduation. <laughs> Getting back to that battery-operated backup save feature, you're permitted to do so only at night, ditto for mid-game loading, as mentioned previously, and with only two slots depending on which one you kick things off with, no less. But beyond that, as ever, please take every provided hint into consideration to ensure every seamless schedule management routine, and be prepared to sacrifice hours upon hours of your natural born yet continuously unfolding life, making every effort fathomable to guarantee the best intentions towards your peers and significant others. Graphically, given how much the franchise has been majorly evolving for over one quarter of a century, and in Japan I might add, not to mention the Super Famicom's limited-ass capabilities in comparison to its more advanced variations, everything's at the very least top-notch, from the multicolored backgrounds, UI interfaces, and various scenes within the school premises, outside and abroad, to the unbelievably diverse, personality-teaming cast of characters and plethora of situations they immerse themselves, and you, in too often. Ignoring the plain Jane choice of hues for each background design depending on which season your character's enduring, the idiosyncratic and charismatic shoujo anime likenesses of each and every supporting character he interacts with are nothing short of enthralling, though it's obvious how the user resonates with every currently displayed expression depending on every in-game situation, and the varieties of occasion-appropriate attire they sport during dates and field trips don't disappoint either. The often occurring chibi-fied animations of Naoto when performing everyday habits and tasks, except via the phone and examine commands, not to mention during the school sports festivals alongside a few supporting characters no less, can become dramatically redundant after a while, notwithstanding how convincing and charming they are at first. Text-wise, given the unimaginably grandiose deal of translation work I had to apply, hence all that you've seen and will continue to see so far here, some of the kanji symbols were a tad indecipherable, but I managed to pinpoint each one individually depending on stroke creation order, as long as they meant what every character was getting at, with the miracle of a few dictionary and symbol detection sites, some examples including these sites listed above. I mean, if I had to pick between yammering on any further about the game's serviceable presentation and skydiving blindfolded from 15,000 feet far above the summit of Mount Everest with lit fireworks strapped to my nuts while singing the clashes I fought the law in both Hindu and Russian back to back, I'd be better off with the latter any day. Music and sound wise, composed by Hidato Karopi Inoue, and for more information on him, refer to my Prodeus review segment, number 21 from season 3. Uh, yeah. and Noriko Takahashi, based on the original CD-based soundtracks by the currently retired Miki Gashino and Associates, and for more info on her, refer to my reviews of Contra, Ninja Turtles, and Gradius. Every accompanying song exhibits all sorts of taste-appropriate vibes like no other, considering once more how redundant a few of them can be after a while. 
For starters, the themes of the different girls when they appear on numerous occasions, especially when offering to walk home with them in various school clubs, within the hallways, and at various locales on and off campus. Never a dull as balls moment. Oh, and ditto for Yoshio's and Ray's themes, not to mention the sports festival anthems and varying everyday habit themes depending on the season. To express that one would be better off looking the other way regarding the typical ass sound effects would be considered another in the often occurring series of understatements of answered any prevailing time period ever, whether it's the year, the era, the decade, the century, or the millennium, whatever. But why deny that they at least add to every crucial moment, case in point the daily habits, club activities, and sports festivals? Of course, the only effect that stands out the most is none other than Shiori's own soundbite-based voice greeting you every time you load a saved file at the beginning, which, if I were you, I highly advise listening very carefully. Well, despite the more advanced PC, PS1, and Saturn variations containing way fucking more than that. Regarding the replay value, as much as I'm making every effort to avoid sugarcoating, reiterating over and over, or tooting my own goddamn horn to the point of ultimate exhaustion, words can't convey how surprised I am that there weren't many dating simulators here in the US when this was all the rage, at least not until the likes of Natsume's Harvest Moon or Atlas's Persona franchise, not to mention Arcade Spirits, Obey Me, Katawa Shoujo, Yandere Simulator, Choices, and even Team Salvato's Doki Doki Literature Club, let alone the multitude of impetuses behind this game never seeing any possible overseas localization opportunities whatsoever throughout the decades. While granted, Tokimeki Memorial isn't for everyone, it at least gives curious minds like mine a million fighting chances to every now and again test one's wits, charisma, hormones, and balls, with the latter falling into place with the former, I might add, and improve on the time-honored societal pastime of wooing and dating your dream partner depending on a common area of personal and skill-based interests, be it athletics, intellect, class, looks, arts, science, what have us, from a fictional and foreign standpoint, of course. It's no question that you'll be drooling with anticipation no matter which girl you try to mature with and make every flawless impression on while avoiding any drama further down the goddamn road, thanks to the unprecedented, near-realistic, and whimsical imagination of Konami. Ultimately, for all the single lonely hearts and otaku the world over, both of whose categories I tragically fall under more than anything, no less. 
There's no way down from atop the Gherkin in London, you'd want to pass up this, one of the first emotionally complex games that put the dating simulation genre directly on the map, well, for Japan at least, until it eventually spread like fucking wildfire worldwide. Henceforth, what's my ultimate final verdict here? Honestly, I've been extremely skeptical over what to make of this dating sim series, let alone the genre as a whole up until now. In direct comparison to everything else I've covered and experienced, for a moment or so, I was hoping it'd be one of those games where you'd end up being bored out of your mind no matter what deal of subtext the characters were trying to convey in any real-life inspired situation ever. But Great Caesar's motherfucking ghost 69ing Tracy Lords while Katie Morgan tosses the salad was I mistaken? Words cannot express how much I recommend this game and its enhanced CD variations as a means of further improving one's day game as it were, trying to make very little mistakes as possible, nobody's perfect granted, but surely tolerating any outcome regardless of how they turn out, and most importantly, pursuing whomever one's heart so desires, considering how picky your desired virtual significance other will turn out to be. Also, what better way to wrap this up than with a quote from one of my recent favorite YouTuber viewers? Some of us are so ashamed of even the most innocent aspects of who we are that eventually we run out of people to be. Anyhow, all poetic stances aside, if you have the means to import and translate Tokimeki Memorial, like I miraculously did, hey, go fucking ape shit! And I also strongly suggest scoping out its manifold sequels and spin-offs, with the latter involving collections, dramas, puzzle games, and the like, outside the dating sim spectrum. Christ, mystical ninja much? Until then, considering how amazing it is to be back after five months, this is the one and only hardcore retro guy triumphantly signing off. Oh, one last thing. Greetings from Mermulac, we summon you, North of the Garthok, don't wanna hunt my coat alone.
Oh, last minute spoiler alert. Remember that rich student I keep mentioning, Ray Juin? In true Castlevania 3 fashion, he is, or should I say they are, actually a girl disguised as a guy. Shit, we didn't see that one fucking coming, did we?